Workshop Topics, this is part two. Setting up a dividing plate on the rotary table, centralising the chuck and looking at some more small machine tools. The main reason I bought this rotary table was that it came with some dividing plates. What are dividing plates? Well, they look like this and they allow the chuck to be accurately locked into position for making things like gears or splines on shafts. I find the only trouble with these gadgets is that there is some mathematics involved and I'm really not good at that. I can remember when I was at school, my penultimate school report for maths said, out of his depth and sinking, and the final school report just said, further critical comment would be futile. But at least I was quite good at music, chemistry, biology, English language and English literature, so my education wasn't all lost. Now that the rotary table is mounted on the milling machine table, it's time to set it up so that it is accurate. There are different ways to do this. The first thing I have to do is slacken off the bolts that hold the chuck to the rotary table. But please note, if you're doing this job, do not slacken the bolts fully. There still needs to be sufficient friction between the chuck and the rotary table so that you can lightly tap it with a soft hammer to centralise it. To be honest though, there is a much simpler way of aligning this chuck on this rotary table on the milling machine, which involves winding the handles on the milling machine table until the centre part of the chuck is perfectly in line with the centre of the main spindle where you fit the collet chuck. So when the milling machine spindle is aligned with the centre of this chuck, everything's fine. But I'm using a dial test indicator for this job. And be warned, this job can take some time. And I'm sure the meticulous ones are going to send me messages saying, why don't you do it like this? Are you aware of that? Etc, etc. I'm fairly aware I'm 66 years old and I know the facts of life, and I even know where babies come from. As you can see in this clip, it's still well out of alignment, but by gently tapping the chuck using a soft hammer like this. I've exaggerated this, by the way, for the video. You don't need to hit it quite so hard. In this clip, I'm just double-checking how tight the bolts are that are holding the chuck onto the rotary table, and they're OK. And another gentle tap, and a bit more rotation, and as you can see, each time I do this, I'm trying to get it so that as I rotate the chuck, there's less and less movement on the dial test indicator. I'm labouring this a little bit for the video. A little bit more tapping, a little bit more adjustment, and now you can see it's really starting to sort of come into the middle. I've zeroed the dial test indicator. You can do that by turning the outer ring. And now the needle on the dial test indicator is not moving too much. In this clip I haven't bothered re-zeroing the dial test indicator, but as you can see, now when I rotate the chuck by winding the handle, the dial test indicator is not moving much at all. And I thought it was near enough for rock and roll for the jobs that I do, one or two thou seemed to be okay. But after I finished making the video, I had to tweak it again and got it even better. After which the voices started and I had to go and lay in a dark room for several hours. I thought I would use a different method to line up the machine vise just to show it on the video. This tool is called a wiggler or a wobbler and it does what it says on the tin. If it's not true, it wobbles like this. So you rotate it and you wind it back and forth and provided it doesn't move and stays exactly the same when it's touching the jaws, everything's fine. And to verify this, I set up the dial test indicator. This is mounted on the part of the milling machine that goes up and down and holds the chuck and as you can see, the machine vice is quite accurately aligned. And once again, I just kept tapping it with a hammer to move it very slightly in very small increments. And talking about very small things, look at this. This is a very small milling machine. This is a Proxon MF70 milling machine. I bought it from a friend of mine. It's done quite a lot of work. He used it for drilling and milling printed circuit boards. It's not wobbling about, by the way, it's just sat on my soundboard, which is not attached to the bench. To go with the MS70 milling machine, I bought this excellent machine vise. This is really nicely made. In the box that it came in were two T-slot nuts and a couple of bolts and washers. The washers that were supplied with the machine vise were a bit on the thick side, I thought. I didn't think there was enough of the bolt going down into the T-nut, so I didn't use them. Time to see if it works. I'm using the milling cutter that came with the machine that was in the milling chuck and I've set the speed according to the diagram on the front of the machine for brass and off we go. But as you can see, 
the table's wobbling from side to side. That's because the jib strip needs adjusting. This is not a new machine, it's had quite a lot of use as I just said. And once I adjusted the jib strip, everything stopped moving around and it became very positive. For such a small machine, this does a very good job of milling. I wouldn't like to think that this was the only milling machine I had in the workshop, but it's definitely going to be very useful. More about this in a later video. So here's an example of quite a deep cut, and it's really not too bad. When I was at RDG Tools the other week, buying some Proxon equipment, I forgot to get a machine vise for the small drilling machine, so when I went over to buy the rotary table, I bought one of these. So how does this perform? Well, the machine vise sits on the movable guide, and the slot in the machine vise which sits on the movable guide isn't a very tight fit, and the movable guide itself moves a little bit. This small machine is going to be really useful for some small jobs that I can think of, particularly for drilling pieces of mahogany. If I needed this component, which is just a piece of scrap anyway, to be accurate, I would drill it using my large milling machine, which also converts to a drill. When I was at RGD Tools buying the rotary table and other things, I also bought some of these. This is a set of single point fly cutters fitted with pieces of high speed steel. And you do need to grind the end of the piece of high speed steel, you can't really use it like this, but they're incredibly useful to have in the workshop and you'll see me using these in a project very shortly. And the final things that I bought from RDG Tools, well, here they are, a set of pin vices. These are incredibly useful for holding small things like very small taps, very small drills. And these are just some things that I've never really had. I've got very small tap wrenches that look like this, but these are much more delicate. So I really thought I would push the boat out and buy a set. They weren't very expensive, and I have lots of uses for these. So that just about rounds off this episode. I can't really say any more, except for thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.